takedown of this global criminal empire. And that's an image of strength. You'll get the raw, hard truth here on The Tipping Point. So come join us Mondays, 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern in Studio B at Revolution.radio. This is the people's war. It is our war. We are the fighters. Fight it then. Fight it with all that is in us. And may God defend the right. Warning, warning. We've got to stop us. They're going to kill us all. See how the trouble you've started? Be they the government, be they industry, be they organized labor, be they anyone, or human beings. Time when the operation of the machine becomes so orient. Makes you so sick at heart that you can't take part. You can't even passively take part. And you've got to put your bodies upon the gears and upon the wheels, upon the levers, upon all the apparatus, and you've got to make it stop. And you've got to win the day to the people who run it, to the people who own it. That unless you're free, the machine will be prevented from working at all. Revolution Radio of FreedomSlips.com, the number one listener-supported talk radio station, throwing ourselves upon the gears of the machine. Revolution Radio, where information never sleeps. You call down the thunder, well now you've got it. Right, you tell them I'm coming, and hell's coming with me, you hear? Hell's coming with me! Revolution Radio. Hello? Ah, there I go. Ah, welcome to the Sun Path. I'm your host, Jay Parker. It's Thursday, May 23rd, 2024. And our guest tonight is Mark Passio. And, uh, allow me to, uh, try to find him on Skype. Do, 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 don't mind me. I'm getting a late start today. All right. There we go. Not good enough. Try this. Ah, come on. Dicky dicky. There we go. Mark is the uh, favorite comedian of the Tavistock Institute for Human Relations and the founder of the Eloy Dissatisfaction Society. Let's see if I can bring him in. Hi. Hey, Jay, how are you? Uh, For some reason, I'm not. Can you hear me? Yeah, I, I can hear you, but this headphone is not working. I'm not. It should be on my headphone. 
What is going on? Oh, Jesus Christ. Well, uh, continue to talk, Mark. Okay, so, um, you know, I'll jump in with, uh, you know, uh, where I perceive things heading in the very near future and, you know, why I think it's going to go that way. Um, I really see people clinging on to things that they consider part of their personal identity and when they do that they're not pursuing a path that really leads to truth it leads to their own bias it leads to things that they want to believe it leads to things that make them feel comfortable and this is what i see to be the main problem in the world today is that people really don't want to bend their worldview to what is they want to uh, decide for themselves as arbiters of truth what is and uh, what needs to be done. Um, and this is what I've called in my work arbiter of truth syndrome. It's the idea that the ego can get to decide what is real and what is true. And that's what we really have people engaging in. We have people engaging in full on postmodernistic thought, which is uh, a complete um worldview distortion created by the social engineers by the dark occultists the uh, mind controllers of our world however you want to refer to them and this is what's not changing we are we are at a point where we have a missing paradigm shift the paradigm shift that was supposed to come uh through an elevation of human consciousness has not arrived. We have not gone through a complete change in our worldview as a species. And the change that was supposed to happen and was supposed to come into our consciousness as a species is the very idea that there is no such thing as moral authority. There is no such thing as any form of authority over other beings that can ever possibly be in alignment with true objective morality because the authority that is claimed over other beings is not a consensual relationship. It is a claim of ownership. It is a claim that someone's behavior must conform to what the authority commands. That is what authority is. It is commands of compliance placed upon another being, and then there are threats of violence carried out in perpetuity. This is the state called duress. If one is held in duress, it means they are under continual threat of violence should their behavior not comply with the commands of the ruling class or the class that considers themselves and other people consider authority. This situation is always backed by the implied threat of violence that is omnipresent at all times and places, or it is backed by actual violent behavior that is carried out by order followers, chiefly the police, if it escalates into some type of a larger conflict with the uh, the wishes and decrees of the ruling class where they disagree with each other, then that escalates into warfare and uh, human the theater of human sacrifice carried out by other order followers called soldiers and military. And the entirety of the situation is 100% based in violence. All claims of authority are based in violence. All government is based in violence. It is violent behavior. It is the threat of violent behavior should one not comply. It's, it's just unbelievable when you take a true look at history and the history of religion and the history of feudalism and the history of the oligarchy for the last 5,000 years, we're talking about exactly what Mao Zedong said. 
power the grows power from the barrel of a gun. Comes through a barrel of a gun. Right. It's yep. always coerced obedience. Right. And now, now imagine that the people of this planet actually believe in their own sick, distorted minds that they are good people for accepting that worldview and believing that it must continue to be like that. That they do not completely reject the very notion of the authority of some beings over other beings. And they would dare to use the term good person in relation to themselves. That is 100% pure Satanism. That is satanic thought in its perfect essence. And the people of this planet actually believe themselves to be good beings, deserving and warranting freedom, instead of absolute pieces of immoral filth that deserve nothing but to be further and further enslaved and eventually extincted. That's why, like, the work that I've been doing to explain this for people for the last 17 years, it's, it's amounted to a hill of nothing burgers. Absolutely nothing has come of it because this species is addicted like a crack addict to wrong beliefs. Uh, you're, the people within the sound of my voice and whoever this message ever reaches, if you believe that authority can ever be moral, that government ever can possibly be something that is moral or attempts to protect rights at all, if you believe any form of rulership is morally legitimate, any form of authority is morally legitimate, you are immoral vermin, absolute immoral vermin, and the universe will allow whatever is going to happen to you and your progeny to happen. It will never step in to assist you. It will never help you. It will never come to your aid. It will watch you be ground to dust mercilessly because that's exactly what a people who believe in that kind of violence deserve you're not good people you're bad people who believe that violence is perfectly moral and should continue to go on unchallenged and you're not speaking that it's wrong you're not teaching other people that it's wrong. And again, in all the years that I've been conveying this message, so little has come of it that I really must, for my own health and benefit, begin to reevaluate the way I even give my message out to the people of this planet. I have to reevaluate it completely, and I'm really thinking long and hard about what I want to do uh, regarding the continuation of my work, because um, I'm really at a place where I'm, quite frankly, and I'm not, uh, I'm not really too macho to say it. I'm, I'm beaten down. People are punching down on an already bad situation because they're losers and they're trash. The, the majority of people in this laughingly called movement. There's no movement at all. There hasn't been any movement since the whole freedom movement began, um, so-called. There hasn't been any movement. There has been no paradigm shift. There has been no elevation in consciousness by the pe collectively by the people of this planet. There's a tiny little 
piss poor handful of people who do get it and wonderful it's great that some people receive the message it's very good for their souls it's very good for the people that they the the, the small numbers of people that they will reach but um when it comes to the aggregate of this species they are held in 100 complete dem- 100% complete demonic possession of the mind. Your minds are captured. Your minds are enslaved. And because the mind is enslaved, nothing can change for the better. And it's not improving because big influencers will not communicate this message because they're cowardly pieces of trash. They will not communicate the message that authority is based in violence and should not be believed in, should not be supported, should not be condoned, should not be uh, participated in. It's all participation in evil. And that's what this entire world relishes. And they just revel in it. They just roll around in it like pigs in slop. Like pigs in slop. And nobody could possibly prove that incorrect. That's the utmost truth of the matter of what takes place on this planet each and every second of each and every day that goes by on this planet. Anybody who believes that the people of this planet are any kind of moral creatures, you're sick. You're, you're literally sick. Your brain dead. And you don't even understand what needs to change. You don't even understand that the mind must change before anything external can ever change. You haven't even gotten that far to understand the very first principle of any part of the occult or any part of the law of attraction or any part of how freedom, the dynamics that govern human freedom actually work in nature. It's just pure conditioned response that has been programmed into you by a social engineer, a group of social engineer engineers whose names you will never know. It's, it's definitely uh, 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 the, the bias that we see in society and the Stockholm syndrome is, is based on thousands of years of conditioning. And we have Ten, at least 10 generations of genetic memory of the trauma of previous generations. And so we're all stuck in the R complex, the lowest part of the brain, the fight or flight part of the brain. This is why I, I was uh, on a, uh, I'm on a quest right now to make some really amazingly good flash drives. And I was on uh, Freedom Under Natural Law and downloading uh, material about the trivium. And and it was nice to see that a couple of the shows we've done recently have been posted to Freedom Under Natural Law. And they were pretty good talks. And it just amazed me because I listened to one from January where we were talking about the concept of God. And, and that God is truth and truth is natural law. And when you make a commitment to truth, the light switch goes on. You break the Stockholm syndrome and you start using the other parts of your mind, like your limbic system, your emotion and your prefrontal cortex. And you start thinking and changing your worldview because, you, you, as David Duck says, you take a step back and you look at it for what it really is. But how conditioned is the perception of human beings? Well, let's just look at that one uh, anecdotal story about Christopher Columbus. When he got to the New World, the Indians could not perceive his ships. It took the shaman over two and a half weeks where he could actually see the ship 
because he had no point of reference. He had a bias filter that such a thing like a Nina Pinta in Santa Maria could not exist. And it took him time to decode right. that and put it in his mind. And I'm just saying that we've been conditioned for thousands of years in Stockholm Syndrome in the R complex. And when you and I talk about a volunteer world and a world where people manifest the true Christ and we become a cell in the body of humanity and we work in cooperation with one another for a upward evolution of consciousness and freedom, and people that are in the R complex that are under the Illuminati hypnotism and Stockholm Syndrome cannot even perceive in any way, shape, or form a world that's not drowning. They can't, in they can't even hear that language. They can't even perceive and understand the language mm -hmm. that's being spoken. It's like it's like a, a form of complete gobbledygook nonsense to them because their consciousness is so degraded. It's mm -hmm. just completely degraded and distorted. Uh, and it's it's the same situation. As you mentioned, the Native Americans literally could not perceive the ships, you know, whether that's, you know, uh, you know, a, a dr dramatized anecdote or it's literally true. Um, you know, the 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 idea still stands true that people literally cannot perceive something that is outside of a completely distorted and degraded worldview that mm -hmm. limits consciousness. And it's just amazing how many people in this world think that we are here to believe anything instead of to know. It's, it's unbelievable that people still in the modern day have so much reverence for faith. At, well, at, we have uh, Catherine Waters joining us. Kat, are you there? Can you hear me, Jay? Yeah. Welcome. Hey, Joe. Hey, How Kat. you doing? Good. How you doing? Yeah, Good. just listening to Mark talk about how Bobo loves us. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, there, there you go. Abuse. Somebody's joining. Somebody's joining the clown party. <laughs> All I need is a clown car on my show, Jay. That, that's that's the next prop I got to get. I got to get a clown car, shove some people in it, like bring it on camera, and then let them all get out of the clown car. That would be a great skit to wrap up a season of What on Earth is Happening. That's what I got to do. You know, it just, it just it has to become almost a parody of itself because it's it's just the situation is just so tragically bad and the, the the disappointment that i feel in the entire community of people i mean imagine that there are people who say they don't want tyranny and then in the next breath will say government must exist and authority is legitimate i mean it is just like it is literally a retarded nursery school class that's what it is. That's what Earth is. It's res retarded nursery school children and, and in the bodies of adults everywhere all around us. Absolutely. Um, uh, Jay asked me to call in to because uh, I have another fundraiser for um, joining the flotilla to Gaza in the summertime. Um, I don't know if you wanted me to talk a little bit about that, Jay. Yeah, absolutely, because your activism, you've dedicated your entire life to natural law and health and trying to get people to understand what a sick abuse, child <laughs> abuse civilization we have. We just pass the abuse from one generation to another in the programmable state, and you've spent your entire life trying to wake people up, and uh, you and Mark should have a uh, a good conversation here. How's it going? <laughs> I, I, I appreciate, um, you know, that introduction um, and what I've been doing on recent podcasts is paralleling the decades, uh, you know, normalized 
child abuse with the genocide of the Palestinians that are just literally the, you know, macro scale version of what people, you know, including. You dropped off. I think we lost her. Yeah. I'll get her back. Okay. Well, I'll pick up, you know, with that. Yeah. I don't know what is going on, (laughs) but, uh, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Tell us, uh, you know, what's going on. Um, you know, I mean, it's 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 good that people are coming out. I mean, they've been coming out for this issue <laughs> against this genocide, but you know, it it worries me when people don't understand how we arrived at this point. Um, the unconscious, bad, unhealthy unfit habits that I literally, you know, witnessed people engaging in at the scale down level for, you know, over five decades. And, you know, we don't just get here overnight. Uh, You know, I mean, it it, it takes decades and decades of, of, you know, people's enabling of the abuse. Lost you again. Mm, Jeez. Well, I mean, it's it's true. It's it's. And my parents told me in what sixty two that they were going to engineer the worst crisis in human civilization's history, and here we are. And people can't see through any of these deceptions and uh, systems of abuse and uh, mm. complete distortion in thinking, because. We have a world that is completely filled with religious thinking, and that does not mean, once again, people will argue until their dying breath with my definition of religion, and they are incorrect. Religion does not just mean cultural religions. It does not mean just Christianity, Islam, Judaism, Buddhism, Hinduism, etc., Those are what are known as the cultural religions, the religions of all different cultures of people all over the earth. That is not the only thing that religion is. Religion is any system of thought that promotes a distorted understanding of nature and truth. If it is not in alignment with what is actually true and real, and someone continues to think and believe according to that system of non-natural, untrue belief, suffering results. Because there is only two ways that human beings generate self-inflicted suffering. They believe what is not true. And they simultaneously refuse to accept what is true. They refuse to come out of belief and into a state of knowledge through learning because they're egotistical, satanically minded, horrific students. They're horrific learners. They have not learned how to remove the ego to the extent that they are capable of receiving truth from any teacher, whether it be nature itself, whether it be from a human being, whether it be from books or or other forms of media like videos or audio, they are incapable of learning. Humanity has a mass learning disability, and it is the result of continued refusal to accept truth because they're egotistically and satanically attached to religious thinking and anybody can say uh, once again you can say you can argue with that until your dying breath and you will still be wrong and i will still be correct Say whatever you want about it and get as offended about that statement what I ju- that I just made. It's still true. Well, Catherine, I was, let, yeah, let's I, talk I don't know about why the, 
The call keeps getting it's dropped. All right. I don't know. Don't what... worry about it. We'll just keep <laughs> rebooting it. So, so, um, what's your plan? I mean, you, yeah, to just um, you know, go from what Mark just said. I mean, he says like the same thing as me. I just kind of use a little bit of different language. And what I saw people doing all my life is just, uh, you know, going according to a man-made system instead of, you know, God and natural law. And this, I mean, it's literally blowing my mind that we're living in this macro version of things that uh, were just so obvious and woke me up, uh, you know, very, you know, early and young in the early 70s that this, you know, um, because I said so, kind of added. It's a shame that she's having te- technical difficulties with her connection. Could be a bandwidth issue. Well, I'll pick up where she left off when she comes I, I back. I just want to say that, you know, when we were talking in the previous show about God and natural law, I mean, it, what is amazing to me about the mind control of this planet is we as a species have been given a mindset that is not from humanity at all it's foreign completely it's, it's com- the completely antithesis. demonic yeah it's the antithesis of our natural way of life it's the yeah. antithesis of life itself it's it's a death based mindset it's a death based world view it's it and as cat was saying it's completely the opposite of the natural world it's 100% in direct opposition to reality see this entire planet is one big satanic church it's yeah. one huge satanic church the whole damned earth we we are a damned species at this point because of what yeah. we believe what we condone what we continue to do every day that this is just a species of pure satanic hearts the people of this planet their hearts are black-hearted satanism yeah. Yeah, deep, deep down inside their soul, they're just 99% of them are black hearted Satanists. And they yeah, love, yeah, but there's good they people. Love it. What's that? But they're good people. Oh, absolutely. We, we, you know, we did social experiments where we asked all these people questions about are your is your mindset actually in alignment with violence do you want to commit do you want other people to commit do you want to condone violence do you want violence to continue to go on unchallenged and just because we're using the verbiage authority government rulership whatever Suddenly, everyone believes that violence can magically go from being immoral to suddenly and magically going to being moral. They they think because you use a flowery word and you don't call it um, implied violence that will be done unto you if you refuse to comply to my demands. And I'm saying I own you. I'm your God. I'm your ruler. I'm your master. And if you don't do what I say, I'll do violence to you or my thugs will do violence to you. And that's all government ever has been for anybody whose brain isn't the size of a half of a peanut. If you have any brain power at all in your mindset if you do not understand all authority is the implied threat of violence or direct violence and therefore moral i just feel you're you're not even a human being you're you are a demon there's a demon that dwells inside of people like that that they cannot exercise they're literally demonically possessed Literally, this is this whole world. This is the invasion of the body snatchers. That's where we're at. And it's not just body snatchers. It's demons. 
Demons have the entirety of the minds of the people of this world, with the exception of a tiny, tiny, piss poor, tiny little percentage. And it's way less than a percent of human beings. Way less. Like, like me and Jay often joke. We, we looked at, you know, you know, you look at some prophecy and you look at the number 144,000, you know, and we're, we're, we're laughing about it in the past and going, boy, you know, that's a pretty stingy number. I mean, only 144,000 out of, you know, six, seven, eight billion people. You know, that's 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 like, uh, you know, really selective, isn't it? That's setting the bar kind of high. And now today we're like, you couldn't find one hundred and forty four thousand million people if you you'd searched for 10,000 years. You couldn't find one hundred and forty four thousand moral individuals that are truly moral. It's a joke. It's a, it's a it's a laughing joke because of people staying attached to their nonsensical religious worldview that that tells them violence is perfectly acceptable and moral, and then at the same time the the the, the whole world has, has just completely continued to engage in these distortions of thought and will not align their perceptions to reality. And like Kat was saying, they just want to buy into the artificial. And as I explained last week, the word artificial comes from the noun artifice. Artifice means a trick, a deception, something that you bought into that wasn't true, that was designed specifically to fool you. And it's done by an artificer. An artificer is a trickster. It's a magician that is trying to pull the wool over your eyes. It's a sorcerer. It's somebody who's a complete deceiver that's telling you 100% lies. And you're believing in them like a moron, like an idiot, like a fool. And that's what almost everybody on this planet is. Absolute deceived fools. Tricked by the grand artificer, which is Satan. And it's not a literal being, folks. It's a force in nature. It's, it's the opposite of truth. It's the opposite of the evolutionary progress that moves consciousness forward and makes it grow and makes it understand more, makes it perceive more, and awakens it to higher levels of, of understanding of our reality. Uh, you know, the, the, we're, we're moving in the other direction. We're moving toward deeper and deeper and deeper illusion with what everybody believes is true. Um, can I? Ahead, I don't yes. think I'm going to get um, cut off this time because I'm calling you from Skype instead of the call-in number, which I kept it kept dropping. But um, the reason why I'm so passionate about this issue with the Palestinians is because um, I mean, like again, like I, my mind gets blown that a, an entire population of people. You know, again, what God makes people that come from nature can be portrayed in the world, you know, to uh, other people as, uh, you know, just so devalued, like this whole tactic of, you know, portraying, uh, you know, just, you know, singled out populations as, uh, you know, whatever just subhuman and animals and i mean like to me that is mind blowing that anyone um can, you know can buy into that what god in nature makes has no value and what man made you know crap you know has value and like like i i i can't wrap my head around how that's possible and i wanted to say you know before i forget like one of the most important things in the world again like if 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 the system can scapegoat and single out children to be abused to play the role of the guilty party when you're in, in the most innocent you can be in life, then, like, to me, that is as sick and as deviated from, you know, basic uh, health as, as one can get. Let me try to demystify it a little. 
uh, because it is all based in religious distortion of thought. Yeah. All of it. Every aspect of it. And what you described, which is the complete inversion and valuing the artificial and not valuing the natural and right. inverting those two things is what Satanism is. It yeah. is the essence of Satanism, which is complete challenge to the God of creation. It's challenge to nature itself, and it's challenge to all life. If you don't understand that, you don't understand what's happening on this planet, which is complete inculcation to the world religion of Satanism. See, people thought the world religion is going to be some new age mumbo jumbo. Oh, it's going to come out of the new age schools of thought. Wrong. We're already at the new world order world religion, and it's called Satanism. And people who call themselves Christians believe in it and enact it with crazed religious fervor. People who call themselves Jewish believe in it and enact it with crazed religious fervor. People who call themselves Muslim believe in it and enact it with crazed religious fervor. And on and on and on, you can go into any of the other lesser, smaller, as far as you know, numbers go, cultural religions, it doesn't matter what other belief system you go into. Everybody on this planet, to one extent or another, every nation, every kind of people has been inculcated into the mass world religion of Satanism. And it's not the worship of an entity called the devil. You're an absolute joke moron. Laughing stock joke. If that's what you believe Satanism is still in the year 2024, anybody who believes that is an absolute retard. And I'll say it right to someone's face. Believing that Satanism is the worship of the Christian devil makes you an absolute retard. That's yeah. not what it is. It's rampant out of control ego. It's refusal to admit you are wrong. It's total distortions of thought and accepting non-natural, incorrect and immoral beliefs into your worldview and mindset and refusing to accept the truth of objective morality and natural law into your worldview and mindset. That's what Satanism is. It is condoning a death cult called government. It is condoning a death cult based in the very belief in authority. That is what Satanism is, ladies and gentlemen. And if you believe in any of those things, you are a black-hearted, black hearted, black sold Satanist in the depths of your being and you deserve whatever happens to you. Um, if, if I can just say, you know, I'm, I'm thinking as you're speaking. So my, my response, what's coming to me is, you know, I mean, my language is health. That's the language that I speak and, and the war against health was so so bad when i you know when i was young just mentally physically spiritually um i, I you know and i and like i wasn't you, you you were never allowed to say any of this stuff because you know it wasn't nice like any kind of factual truth you know you know offensive you know you couldn't say and just call out the people around me, you know, again, I just say it, I just speak like the, the truth, like um, that family was enemy, community was enemy, like straight up enemies, you know, um, the exact opposite of, of how truly 
healthy and fit family and community should have acted. And, you know, so, um, you know, the, the, you know, healthy self-defense, healthy vibrancy, like the reason why, again, like I'm um, really passionate about the um, case, you know, the, the plight of the Palestinians is because they're, th- this issue is making the same point that I lived and was trying to make for over five decades about how each person on the earth we're all here to self-actualize and reach our healthy potential. That should not be radical, except that everybody made living like a complete uneducated, losing, paycheck chasing order follower um, normal. And they literally sold their health out, their higher levels of health for a false sense of security and a regular paycheck. Period. End of story. I saw people doing it when I was young and it literally terrified me. Uh, Like what was going to happen with people doing this decades down the road? And so with the Palestinians, like they use the term self-determination. And I my firm belief is that this, you know, the, 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 um, the extermination of the Palestinians is getting so badly because so many people set the bar on their quality of life and their, you know, level of, uh, you know, accomplishment and living the, the rightful uh, full potential that they're supposed to so low. And so that literally trained the Satanists that, hey, you know, these losers are just going to, you know, accept their lot in life and they're just going to take you know the paycheck so you know like we, we we can just make anybody we want the you know the the subhuman uh the terrorist for you know because because if if you don't exercise all of your parts if the if the people the masses americans and i spell it with a k all the time don't exercise all of them their their parts you know then they're literally forfeiting that to the satanists that are more than happy to take your energy and use it against you know the palestinians and and even themselves i mean like it just it's just i can't even believe that this is the world that we're living in today like i i I never thought people would have let it happen I I also, in the beginning of my work as a public speaker, thought that we would have definitely been able to wake up a much larger percentage of the world to what is really taking place and how immoral the situation is, and that they would have actually taken real-world action and done something about it. But to be honest, there's not enough care. There's not enough knowledge there's not enough right action. And this goes back to the dynamic of, um, as you put it, Kat, health in all of its aspects. But health is an extension of truth. Mm -hmm. And if you don't care about what's true, there can be no health. There can't be health in the, the physical. There can't be health in the mental. There can't be health in the spiritual domain. And that's where we find ourselves because people don't want the truth. They don't really want the truth. They want truth that they can be comfortable with that in in their little limited box of consciousness and in their little, little limited comfort zone. But as soon as you ask someone to transcend their comfort zone and change their worldview, which is where they have their little dainty, fragile identity built, then all of a sudden, truth goes out the window, and so does health. And what we have is a situation that I've talked about in uh, my podcasts and many of my presentations, but really highlighted this situation um, in 
a, a, a presentation that I did back in 2014 called Cosmic Abandonment. It might have been a little in 2015 or something like that. But Cosmic Abandonment is about the abuse victim cycle of humanity that we are trapped in. We are trapped in a time loop of abuse and victimhood. And the abuse victim cycle continues on and on until enough knowledge is gained to get out of it. See, health is generated through a diagnosis. If there is something wrong with any aspect of health, you have to make a diagnosis first to understand what the causal factors of the problem are. You don't just start treating symptoms. And that's what our civilization of human beings wants to do. We want to look at a symptom and say, oh, I don't want that symptom. And then in the next question that you'll pose to them is, well, do you, do you really want to know why that symptom manifested itself and actually change it from the causal level of what caused the problem to begin with, not just slap a bandage on the symptom. 99.999% of people say, no, I don't want to know the causal factor. I don't want to treat it from that level so that it won't happen again. Give me the Band-Aid and let me slap the Band-Aid on the symptom. And that's why the symptom will continue to re-manifest and reappear over and over and over ad infinitum. And it will never go away. And suffering will just continue endlessly in a complete cycle of karma yep. and abuse yeah, and victimhood. Yeah, they really don't want to do what is necessary, you know, to uh, like, I mean, I just, again, use the language of like fitness and just at least moving in the direction of fitness. And um, I just I wanted to say before I forget. Um, uh, again, with, you know, with health and, and psych, because most people, I mean, it's so, like so obvious that we just live in such a mentally ill world. And I mean, I saw how ignorant people were to just basic uh, health that like it just was staggering. But um, this idea of voting and elections and uh, like, I don't I, I don't understand it at all. I think it's completely not in alignment with health and natural law at all for um, grown people to constantly need a parent when like millions and millions of children don't even have parents. And like, I just think that it's just so bizarre. Um, you know, one thing that like I was so, you know, cause I studied so much about the family system and, you know, you, you're supposed to be raised like period. And you're supposed to be able to be raised to stand on your own two feet, fly out of the nest and the cord is supposed to get cut. And clearly the family system has been so dysfunctional and abusive over the decades because the wonderful, uh, U.S. real government is so evil and satanic that if it raised people to fly out of the nest, then, you know, the government wouldn't be needed anymore. And so they have to undermine the public in order to, you know, over, um, uh, you know, inflate the, their importance. And they have to keep uh, people like childlike and they have to um, like I was just right. I just right, wrote this the other day on like social media or something about uh how it's literal it's literally impossible to be a good healthy parent in this country because if you if people truly were quality parents they would have to go right up against this sick system and so you you literally have to be a shitty parent and it's just gotten so bad now with, you know, the jab and, and, you know, kids getting injured. And, you know, so it's now it's like so blatant that it's really waking a lot of people up. but still not everyone. 
And I don't um, think they're they're woken up to any sufficient extent because regardless of what they think happened in the physical world, they still haven't changed their worldview to reject the idea of authority. The, see, the whole idea is that as long as anybody continues to believe that people in the 3D world are any type of authority over them, they're cosmic children. Yeah. A cosmic adult does not accept that any other being has any authority over them. Yeah. And it's, it's just imagine that this is the religion that governs this planet. This planet is a satanic church and an insane asylum all in one. Because guess what? Those are the same thing. That's what a satanic church is, an insane asylum. The belief in authority is what Satanism is. That's what it wants everybody to believe, so everybody becomes a slave. That's what Satanism wants. The, the force, Satan, the adversary, the opposer to everything that is good, to everything that is just, to everything that is orderly, to everything that is life, is the force that wants to destroy all. All of those good things. It's not an entity. It's what in the occult world is known as the force of involution. It's the opposite of the evolutionary force which grows things in consciousness and understanding and vitality and life and experience. Involution does the opposite. It kills life. It kills consciousness. It stunts growth. It retards growth. It makes things go backwards. It makes things curl up into a ball instead of expand and flower outward. You know, that's where we're at. This whole place has become an inculcation into the religion of involution. Radio at freedomslips.com. I utilize logic, intellect, and magic to methodically autonomize, vivisect, analyze, examine, study, scrutinize, and extract an essence of reality from a fog of illusion and confusion. You can find me on Studio B every Thursday, 1700 hours Pacific Time, that's 8 p.m. Eastern. No topic taboo, no subject too strange. I strive to take a neutral standpoint during the dissection of the topic at hand. That's reality extraction with Mr. Rowe on Revolution Radio. Join me at Revolution Radio, Studio B, at 11 a.m. on Saturday for free association. When we take a look at philosophy, spirituality, psychology, social issues, and geopolitics. It's every Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern on Studio B at freedomslips.com. of an organization to the madness, discussing the ever-changing dynamics of being both physically and mentally prepared for a plethora of possible outcomes to our future and present. A look into the latest technologies, new scientific discoveries, and how they might be used in connection to the human domain and controlling it, ancient cultures and places. Be warned. This is an opinionated look through headlines. 
guests that are not afraid to question the narrative, a little bit of crazy ramblings of a stoner conspiracy factus that pushes constitutional concepts. The place and the time are the same, another dimension we call mountain high time. Saturdays, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Mountain High Time, right here on Revolution.Radio, where information never sleeps and truth breaks the spell. The original machine had a base plate of pre-famulated amulite, surmounted by a malleable logarithmic casing, in such a way that the two spurving bearings were in a direct line with a panometric fan. The lineup consisted simply of six hydrocoptic marzal veins, so fitted to the ambifacient lunar wane shaft that side fumbling was effectively prevented. The main winding was of the normal lotus o deltoid type placed in panendermic semi-boloid slots of the stator. Every seventh conductor being connected by a non-reversible tremie pipe to the differential girdle spring on the up end of the gram meters. Thank you for listening to Revolution Radio, taking the confusion out of transmutated lunar girdle springs for four years and running. Revolution Radio, the number one listener-supported alternative media radio on the planet. I want to thank everybody for listening to Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com, the one place where information never sleeps. Revolution, Revolution Radio. All right, all right let's show them what we got here. Thanks for listening while we took that short break here at Revolution Radio, FreedomSlips.com. And now we're going to get back to your host. And we're back. It's May 23rd, 2024. You're listening to The Center Path. And before we continue with our guests, Mark Passio and Catherine Waters, I just wanted to say that, you know, in going to Freedom Under Natural Law website and uh, downloading a bunch of Trivium talks uh, by some excellent teachers like Mark Passio and Richard Grove, uh, I was astonished by the revelation of truth that I saw. Uh, Just... Critical thinking, using your mind for something other than a repository for football betting. And uh, it's shocking how little people really care about where their heads and hearts are at. And I realize this mind control system in this planet uh, is just so vast. It's so, top to bottom with the vaccines, the poison food, the poison water, the Fukushima, the chemtrails. I mean, the human race is being ground into dust. And still people are out there, like Donald Trump, playing golf. Amazing. I want to thank everybody for uh, donating to Revolution Radio becoming a member, or giving a one-time donation, uh, keeping our service going. And uh, I just want to say, Catherine, I want want you to talk about your ongoing mission in support of uh, the Palestinians who are getting uh, robbed of their $500 billion worth of natural gas by Israel as we speak. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll just talk about the the fundraiser, and then I can let you know let you mark it back to your conversation. But um, so in April, I think it was the sixteenth. I mean, I started a give send go on April the fourth um, to go to Istanbul to join this. Um, they were calling it an emergency. It's a, you know basically an emergency ship um, that that was supposed to go directly from Istanbul without making any stops, you know, to Gaza with 5,500 tons of aid. Um, You know, unfortunately, it kind of 
um, happened right when um, like the, the thing with Iran was going on and there was a bit of retaliation from Iran. Um, but anyway, um, so I was able to uh, quite successfully, uh, with the help of Scott Ritter, <laughs> raise the money um, uh, with, in less than a week. Uh, I think it was like three, about like three thousand dollars. I mean, it's like two thousand dollars for a flight. It just it, itself, but um, that mission completely uh, has been indefinitely detained, for lack of a better description for it. Um, you know, it it um, got sabotaged from leaving pressure from you know, the Israeli government on the Turkish government and plus uh, a withdrawal of a flag, like in order to, uh, you know, for the, the ship to depart, like you need to be have another country's flag. And um, the, the country of Guinea-Bissau flag that they had uh, was withdrawn again uh, under the pressure of uh, Israeli government. And um, so they're still working on trying to um, have this ship uh, leave. It's, it's, I don't think it's in Istanbul anymore. I actually think it, it's uh, ported somewhere else. But anyway, uh, so I'm, again, raising funds to join uh, another flotilla, a smaller one, uh, which left Oslo in, on May the 1st that makes stops in various ports around uh, Europe, eventually stopping, uh, hopefully (laughs) breaking the siege of Gaza. And uh, so, you know, I'm just going to do one leg of it uh, in, you know, Spain and France. And they, they, uh, have rallies. They meet with officials. Uh, really trying. To, there's so much support. They, like there's so much support for the Palestinians, and this. Uh, I mean, the, the fact it, it should really terrify the world that this can't be stopped. Like that there isn't anything, anyone. Uh, I know recently, again, the, the ICC is calling for the arrest of Netanyahu, and um, tr- I'm trying to remember the, I think there's another guy's name, I, this is escaping me now, but... Uh, the head and, of Israeli and, defense. Right, and, and you know, and then Netanyahu... Plus, like, you plus know, the Hamas leadership. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, whoever kills the president of Iran... You know, I, you know, I, 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 I would guess that it was just an accident, but, um, it's just, it's just, and, you know, and I, I get really angry, um, because a kid can figure this stuff out and like, it just, this whole system just completely like free, I mean, it freaks me out how, you know, gutless. Um, we you know we really do live in in a country of gutless cowards that you know I'm like I get really tired of going on social media and and you know listening to you know quote unquote adults complaining and pointing fingers at you know the leaders of the country and and begging the leaders of the country to stop funding Israel and I'm like well why don't the people stop funding their psycho leaders. I mean, you know, I, I, like I don't want to, you know, toot my own horn or anything. Oh, you know, you know, children have had to grow up early and take responsibility because they've had abusive parents, for God's sakes. And the fact that grown people can't do it is just so so shameful. People should just be so ashamed for. Yeah, and like, like you know, adult people get to point fingers and blame leaders that they enabled for decades. And I mean, children don't enable their abusive leaders. They're like born right into these horrible, abusive environments. And yet grown people get to act more like victims than, you know, even children do when they're abused. 
And so people can go on Gifts and Go, put in my name, Catherine with a C, Waters with two T's. And um, I mean, I started a, a, a new one for this second leg, this second mission. I'm going to unpublish the first one. I tried doing it before, but it wouldn't let me. There was some tech thing. It wasn't letting me unpublish it, but. And that's it. Well, thank you. I, 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 I just don't support either side, but I definitely know that Hamas is uh, working with Israel. The uh, October 7th attack was a green light attack. And what I mean by that is what uh, Matt Bracken said on InfoWars. It, Netanyahu has been giving money to Hamas for years, and he needed this attack October 7th in order to have a crisis that would keep him in power and allow him to do more work on the Greater Israel Project. And well, that's what they always do, right? Fund both sides. And Israel mm-hmm. created Hamas to create division between the Palestinians and the PLO. Right. Uh, it's known, but not by the majority of people, because they only know who is uh, number one on the charts in music and uh, football. Taylor Swift. <laughs> And I'm just saying that we're in a situation where Israel wants that $500 billion worth of natural gas off the coast of Gaza. Hands down, they're already selling the leases to drill for the natural gas, a, a, a clear violation and theft and a violation of natural law and international business law, but they're doing it because they're getting backed up by the Americans, and the Americans have built a pier on the Gaza shore, and when the Israeli Defense Force attacks Rafa, They'll herd everybody towards a pier, and then the American ships will pick them all up, and the ethnic cleansing will be complete. Yeah. And, you know, and, and, and the U.S. is telling people, oh, yeah, we put that pier there, you know, to, to, to help the Palestinians. I mean, like, who believes this stuff? The country that funds the genociders are, are, is going to, you know, they're building this pier, you know, f- f- you know, to to bring aid to the Palestinians. I mean, that's like, it's it, it just like uh, the naivety or just, I don't know, man. It's like, are, are you mean, saying that Joe Biden's talking out of both sides of his mouth? Jesus. I Joe mean, Biden's how, from Orton, Delaware. He's the I mean, justice. I mean, you know, um, you know, Americans get the, get the leader that they tolerate. I mean, come on. Without a it's doubt, a it, it's a total reflection of the consciousness of the people. Exactly. Exactly. The Stockholm Syndrome of the people. <laughs> when, when you, when you uh, I, I recommend this to anybody to go to uh, Freedom Under Natural Law and take a look at the uh, great presentations there. And also, when you're Googling... The trivium, remember to put trivium method rather than just trivium because you'll get the band trivium, which is a Tavistock Institute mind social engineering construct. I want to talk about two aspects of the uh, Israel-Palestine situation. I don't generally get into... Uh, politics or conflicts when it comes to that because I realize it's all about destabilization and fear and trauma 
to uh, continue to get people to look to government as a solution instead of an enslaver. But um, it's interesting to look at a couple of dynamics with this conflict. One, in how much it resembles what exactly was done to the Jewish people um, in World War II. And uh, the, the, you know, pogroms that were conducted upon them by the Nazis. And uh, the Nazis continually asked uh, them to emigrate out of Germany and German controlled regions of Europe and countries from all over the region and America and, um, you know, all countries of Europe uh, did not want that to occur. Uh, they wanted them to remain in those regions uh, that that were Nazi controlled and didn't want to take them into into you know their countries. Uh, now the the opposite will probably occur, where other countries will take Palestinian refugees. But um, it's only because um, in the World War II situation. Um, uh, the um the 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 germans the nazis did what they did to the jews following countries refusal to take those populations of people and then afterward obviously the nation of israel was set up to uh move population populations of jewish people uh israelis and begin a new nation in the land that was already uh inhabited by palestinians um, so this is a continuation of the same abuse victim cycle that Jews underwent during the, um, Nazi, uh, control of Germany and subsequent years and no lessons were really learned. You know, uh, it was not learned. Do not then turn this type of, uh, abuse on to another population of people but see now there's not a, as much of an investment for um other nations to stop israel in what they are doing because they largely consider it an internalized affair going on within one country's borders um they don't see it in the way that people perceived uh, the expansion of Nazis uh, by annexing other nations and territories in Europe in World War II, prior to World War II, I should say. Um, you know, the, the Nazi machine got off its leash, and that's when other nations decided, well, we're going to actually step in and do something about it. Here, you don't have a a war machine akin to Germany around World War II time period in modern day Israel, although they possess nuclear weapons, they're uh, arguably not crazy enough to use them on any neighboring states because they know that would be a whole conflagration in the Middle East. But um, I think that, you know, they, uh, you know, aren't going to expand and take on an expansionist mindset like the Nazis did in World War II and start attacking neighboring countries. That's why I think less people are even concerned about what is happening with the Palestinian people, which this is a uh, this is a um, uh, an apartheid nation. Uh, they are attempting to commit uh, genocide on um, you know uh, a scale that we haven't seen since World War II. And I think they will probably succeed, as you said, in the ethnic cleansing of the state of Israel. And it's, it's just sad because lessons are not learned. Consciousness is not achieved. Sick religious mindsets are not purged out of the mind and worldview like the viruses that they are. It's, it's just it's tragedy all around uh, because that's the only thing that dumb people reap dumb people reap tragedy and i just want to say that you know i'm not just attacking um uh, religion i'm not i'm not only attacking one religion i'm not saying that i'm 
on the attack against Christians or Muslims or Jews or any any religion in particular. I think religion is the entirety of the problem with the entire species of humanity. The notion of believing things that are not true and then becoming completely ideologically and identity-wise attached to these nonsensical, distorted worldviews that are given to us by Satanists. Satanists created all the modern religions as they stand today. Uh, if you really go back to the true essence of the Christian tradition, you know, I don't attack the heart of real Christianity. Uh, I would consider that the esoteric teachings and what is known as, again, the, the, the true Christos or Christ consciousness, anointed consciousness, consciousness that has purged these sick, demented worldviews and belief systems and come to an understanding of true objective morality under natural law. In that sense, I consider myself an esoteric Christian, and I don't uh, knock true uh, spiritual understanding. The problem is churchianity. The problem is Constantinianity. The problem is Council of Nicaeanity, you know, which is insanity. You know, it, all religion is. You know, again, again, we could talk about the origins of all religions, especially if you look at Judaism as, uh, you know, the Talmudic version, especially having the type of twisted, distorted, racialist beliefs that it does, which, again, you would think that uh, Jewish people would have learned from the racialism that they experienced in World War Two and and, you know, uh, leading up to it, uh, that you shouldn't behave with that kind of mindset. And yet they continue religiously to accept it from distorted versions of Judaic beliefs and early Hebrew beliefs and turn that on to other people that then they take a racialist worldview of. It's crazy. This is 100% demented madness. And once again, I recommend people look at my work with my Cosmic Abandonment series, because if you don't understand the origin of world religions, you can't understand a mindset that is taken by a group of people that actually consider themselves to be uh, the chosen people of any particular persuasion. You know, that's what the Nazis thought that they were. They were the chosen people of Europe. You know, they were the chosen people of the world. Uh, you know, they were the, the Heron Volk, the master race. Uh, and they were going to force their distorted religious occultic worldview on the rest of the world and take it over and rule it and conquer people and and ethnically cleanse and uh, exercise eugenics upon whoever they wanted as long as they deemed them unfit and if you look at the worldview that modern Judaism not all of it but some sects of it particularly the Talmudic sects have uh, taken on it's completely based in the same satanic ideology you know, even modern Christians think that they're, you know, chosen people in many respects. Islamists believe that they're chosen people of God. This all comes out of the ancient world. This entire sick, satanic, distorted religious mindset comes out of how human origins actually came about. And I talk about it in my Cosmic Abandonment series my Cosmic Abandonment podcasts, and the Cosmic Abandonment presentation itself. And it's still not understood. It's never going to be understood. Let, let's face it. that No one's ever going to accept what really happened in the human ancient past to create our species. It will never be accepted. It will constantly be looked at as something we can never know, or even the fragmentary accounts that come down to us from ancient civilizations will not be listened to. They will not be accepted as historical accounts. They will be looked at as some kind of fictional stories or allegories gi given by those people to their children. And um, humanity just will not accept where we came from, which we're a slave species. We were created as a slave species. We were looked at as trash 
and discarded after the work that we were commissioned to do was finished for the beings that created us. And then they left. And it was like parents just crapping out a couple of kids and just abandoning them on the side of the road. That's literally what happened to humanity. You want to talk about the macrocosmic you know, understanding of the microcosmic daily reality that we're experiencing and living every day? All you need to do is go and research true human origins. And a million people will tell you, no, it can't be that. It's impossible. It's too horrific. See, everybody wants to color reality to what they find comfortable. That's why this is a garbage species. That's why this is a species of... Com- I'm going to start calling humanity trash apes. Because <laughs> it's not even good enough to call them mud apes. Mud serves a purpose. You know, there's beneficial bacteria in it. Um, you know, it could be even used to make clays and stuff like that. It's like, y- y- you don't even want to call them made of mud. They're trash. And again, I'm not singling out any group in particular. I'm calling everybody trash. I'm calling almost every person trash. I, I'll qualify it and say it's not 100%, but it's like 99.9999% that are garbage. And it, they're well, not garbage because they're inherently garbage. They're garbage, they're garbage because of how dumb they are. They're garbage because they have no true knowledge of anything worthwhile having knowledge about. They're garbage because they don't understand real morality. They're garbage because they believe in BS crap called religious morality. And again, I'm not, I'm not singling out Christians, Muslims, Jews. I'll attack all religions equally and tell them they're all trash for the mind. They're all trash for the mind. There's no truth that you're going to really garner from all of the distorted modern religions. If you go back far enough, you you could get some seeds of truth and understanding from the original traditions that they grew out of. And some would argue those are even few and far between. And they've never served to help humanity. They've only resulted in war and death and division and complete distortion of thought and yet so many people still believe this stuff is somehow good and somehow serves who we are it's all junk all of it it's junk and this is what people fill their minds with just because they're lazy sacks of crap you're you, people who just believe stuff are, you're just lazy pigs you're just lazy loser pigs that just want to believe because it's easy and you're lazy sacks of crap and you don't want to do the hard work that it takes to win real knowledge you don't want to do real deep digging and research and true edification meaning doing the due diligence to truly elevate your mindset through understanding through knowledge and understanding no you don't you don't want that That's damned hard work. And what most people within the sound of my voice want, you want to remain little crap in the diapers children begging for other people to take care of them who are know-nothing trash, who never bothered to execute their willpower to truly learn. They're just apathetic, lazy losers. That describes almost every person alive. Almost every person with the sad, just the sad exception of a tiny, 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 tiny percentage that is far less than a percent of all the beings on this planet. And the vast majority of people deep within their heart they're satanic because they reject God's law, period. The vast majority of people reject natural law. You don't want to learn it. You don't want to understand what it is. You want to continue to believe in systems of belief that are in direct contradiction to God's laws. 
and then prop them up on a pedestal and make them your church. And mm, that's golden calf. What's that? Golden calf. Absolutely. 100%. Give us and Barabbas. Worships it. Give us Barabbas. W- w- with one voice. You know, with that's the, the voice. allegory of the New Testament. You know, what, what really Giving needs to be said ch- is the- people need to understand that the natural inquisitiveness of the child is in the programmable state destroyed by this culture. That's and right. When you were a little ch- child, you said, why is that? What's this? Blah, blah. You had a curiosity to know. And they beat it out of you. They beat the question why out of people, which is the source of all power. Because mm-hmm. getting the correct answer to the question why will invariably lead to true understanding and right action. And that's why people don't engage in true understanding and right action because they do not have the answer to the question why is the human condition the way it is and that's why I recommend people to look at my cosmic abandonment series and really understand what happened in the on the earth in our distant past that turned us into complete traumatized children traumatized cosmic children who don't want to learn anything who don't want to expand their horizons, who don't want to use their mind to learn new things, to learn things that they find uncomfortable to accept or to want to look into. That's what makes almost everybody in this world a complete trash ape. That's what I'm going to start calling humanity, the species of trash apes. I was going to call it the detritus apes, but 99.99999% of people don't know what the word detritus means. And it means trash for those who don't know it. The word detritus means trash or garbage. We're trash apes. That's what humanity is. It's not what we are innately or must continue to be. We can rectify that condition and change from being trash apes to being completely Christed anointed beings. And we can change very quickly in an evolutionary progression in consciousness if we choose that path. Almost zero of this species chooses that path. We want to keep our religious bull crap in our minds keep believing distortions of reality instead of looking at natural law we want to believe what the artificers have put in front of our eyes and we want to look at the illusion and say yes that's absolutely true and i could just believe it and i don't have to do any hard work to win knowledge screw knowledge give me my belief because that's easy because i'm a lazy trash ape well, and that's what when, almost when how almost believer, all human beings think. When you're a believer in a religion, there is a uh, mastermind of emotional energy that goes with the cult of religion, and you're sedated and s- satisfied with this group think and with this belonging in the cult of religion. Whatever religion is, you have an identity because you've decided, I'll park my ass here and I'll be safe. I, I, that'll cure all my problems as far as not knowing my ass from my elbow, and so you have it. Ima- imagine, Jay, people have a problem with me telling dumb lazy, ignorant people that they're dumb, lazy, cowardly, and ignorant. Instead of having the problem with the people who are dumb, lazy, cowardly, and ignorant. I mean, imagine that. That you're getting upset. People will get upset at the messenger of the truth just because they're delivering a bad message. They're delivering bad news. But see, simultaneously, I just told you the good news that 
we are all capable of learning, growing, and changing. The problem is we're not choosing that path because we have completely embedded self-loathing that was brought upon us by the conditions that we were put in in our infancy as a species. If a, a group of parents had children and dumped them on the side of the highway and the children know that they were abandoned like that, don't you think they're going to be traumatized by that? And that's going to color perhaps the rest of their lives? Most people never learn how to heal traumas that they've undergone. And so all they do is continue the abuse victim cycle. I have done the shadow work to heal the traumas that I have undergone, at least to an extent that I can become a relatively healthy person who wants to pursue the truth, learn it, and then teach it to others. Almost no human beings are in that situation, percentage-wise. Hardly anybody actually learns and teaches the truth to other people. They don't become teachers. They don't become public figures who create media and put media out onto the information highway that is the Internet that can actually teach people from afar and show them the truth. No, they just want their comfort. They want to be left alone. They want to go and run and hide. They don't want to make their voices public because they're cowards. We have a nation of ignorant, lazy, cowardly people. Why would anyone with any level of intelligence to their being expect good things to happen as a result of having a population that is ignorant, lazy, apathetic, and cowardly? Only bad things happens to people like that, and that describes almost everyone. Certainly, yeah, like by my Doritos. standards. But What's Mark, that? they like Doritos. I mean, you know, you know there's, there's a game on in 15 minutes. What are we? Why are we talking about morality and care and knowledge when there's a game on in 15 minutes, man? Yeah, I'm telling you, man, you're a real buzzkill. <laughs> I, I and imagine the that. people believe the problem lies with me after all the colossal volumes of information I've put out and turned people on to. The problem lies with me for saying hardly any progress has been made and we're still ignorant, lazy, cowardly, and apathetic. And I'm the problem for saying the truth regarding the current human condition. Imagine this. This is is what trash people are, Jay. That describes a complete piece of verminous trash. Rat trash is what someone like that is. When they can't hear the truth being spoken because all they hear is the emotion or they hear, it's negative, so I have to refuse it. And I have to say the problems with the guy who just said that truth. They're losers. Losers who can't handle the truth. That's why they go and scurry when the, the truth is put out in a completely definitive, unapologetic way where I don't care whether you accept it or not. It's true anyway, and you could get as offended as you like about me speaking the truth of existence. You can get as offended as you want. It's still going to be true. I, I have to say, Mark, you know, I really appreciate Richard Grove and his work he's doing. Uh, it's Richard's it's phenomenal. refreshing. It's really refreshing, and I downloaded everything that he had on the web as far as uh, you know history, so it's not repeated. And yep. uh, it's phenomenal just, podcast history, so it doesn't. If repeat. people don't understand, we're in a mind control world, and they don't. They refuse to believe that they've been bamboozled, and You've got to be like Dr. Carl Sagan. You've got to understand it's easier for people 
okay, to deny that they've been bamboozled, then accept the fact yep. you've been bamboozled. It doesn't matter if you've been mind controlled through rape and torture like myself. Or you've gotten it through the subliminals of the TV and the education system. You're still mind controlled. You're still stuck in the art complex. You're still a child. Yep. 100%. Cosmic childhood is what we're stuck in. We're stuck in a loop of abuse and victimhood. Continuously perpetuating the abuse victim cycle which I talk about extensively on my podcast series, What on Earth is Happening. And we are still stuck in the complete distortions of the mind called religious beliefs. Instead of, we're, we're, we're a world that is completely drowning in religious beliefs, and we're a world that has hardly any true spirituality, true understanding of real morality. And almost everybody who has recognized that religion, the cultural religions at least are distortions, have other religions and have thrown the true spiritual understanding of true morality out as the baby that's thrown out with the bathwater of religion. That's where we're at as a species. All religion is garbage. All atheism is garbage. Both of those systems are complete dichotomies. They are dialectics to push people away from the truth of true spirituality through the understanding of true objective morality and the understanding of how natural law works as the governing dynamic, which we operate in alignment with and generate true freedom, or we operate in opposition to and generate our own enslavement. I, I have asked people to do one simple thing. And, you know, again, I want to qualify why I'm the, I'm the hardest on people who call themselves freedom activists or freedom advocates and on people who call themselves Christian. Because I hold Christianity in its true aspect to a much higher moral standard than other world religions. It's out of the cultural religions, it's the highest consciousness one. And if people really understand real esoteric Christianity, they might come into an understanding of real freedom and how it is generated in our world through alignment with natural law. I ask people, here's a litmus test that you can do. Ask people in any particular aspect of life, wherever you happen to go, could you explain in like one or two sentences the entire dynamic of how freedom actually works in nature? Give me a, a, a small paragraph, a couple sentences. How does the dynamic of freedom actually work in the natural world? Meaning, Explain to me how a species is either free or enslaved in the aggregate, in the collective sense. Is humanity a free species or are we essentially a slave species? And anybody with half of a brain can see we don't have our natural rights intact. They are usurped at all times and places. They are completely, we are kept from exercising rights that we do have. We are forced to do things that are completely against objective morality and natural law. And held under duress in that condition, which is slavery. That's what slavery is. People forced to do things that they don't want to do or prevented from exercising their true rights. That's what slavery is. That's the definition of slavery. So explain. Ask people. Explain very simply. What is the dynamic that generates either human freedom or human enslavement? And no one will get the answer right. Let me tell you who will, will get the answer right if you ever encounter any of these people, which is highly unlikely. 
The only people who will ever tell you the correct answer to that question are people who deeply know my work. No one else will get the actual answer correct about what the real dynamics of human freedom are. And here they are, ladies and gentlemen. This is the correct and true answer. As the, as the species understanding of true objective morality and their alignment of their collective behavior to it increases, the species becomes a freer species. And as they refuse to learn true objective morality and align their behavior to it, they become more and more enslaved over time. That's all anyone needs to truly know about how freedom works. And then you can flesh out all the specifics by really understanding what rights are, actions which do not initiate harm to other sentient beings, versus what wrongs are, actions which do initiate harm to other sentient beings in the form of the transgressions against natural law, God's law, which are murder, assault, rape, theft, trespass, coercion, and deception, the true seven deadly sins, as opposed to the false seven deadly sins of fake-ass religion. And That's a good presentation. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've given it. It's on littered with uh, the curse of morality. The law. Right. It's ab the, this presentation is just littered with this vile, evil word, morality. You know, I, I, I hate to keep saying it. I know you're on a bunch of a AM and FM affiliates, so, well, you know, I, I don't want to... Well, not using the word principles. <laughs> God forbid. I mean, look out. You know, something that almost no human being truly has... Hardly any humans alive today have principles. They don't have the truth of what morality is. They believe in completely false, fabricated, artificial versions of morality thrown at them by satanic religion. Religions that are completely invented and put upon the earth as complete artifices by Satanists. That's what all the religious traditions of this planet are. And there's hard, almost everybody is bought into them, and hardly anybody knows true spirituality under natural law. And that's why we're a slave species. That's why we continue to be a slave species. That's why we're not on the path to freeing ourselves. We're on a path to deeper and deeper and deeper bondage. Get used to it. You'll never be freer than this second. And freedom will continue to decline and decline and decline and decline because people will not highlight the message of natural law to a wider audience. People will not bring this into the purview of big media influencers of the alternative media movement because they're cowards. They're fakes. They're degenerates. That's what all the alter the mainstream alternative media, as David Icke calls them, you're cowards and degenerates yourselves. And again, these are the groups of people I'm going to hold the standard to the toughest. People who laughingly will dare to call themselves Christian, they couldn't spell the word Christ, let alone know what the heart and the essence of true Christianity is. You couldn't spell the word. And the people who say that they're advocates of human freedom and that they want to be free and they don't want tyranny, you couldn't spell the word free if you tried. That's how dumb you are when it comes to the dynamic. You couldn't even spell the damn word, let alone know how it operates, even though I just told you. And if I will continue to tell you, and I've told you a thousand times, because people are just that dumb and satanically hard-headed. Well, it, it takes, like, hearing the truth seven times before a mind control victim will even consider pondering it. They'll hear it seven million and still reject it. But, but, they're, they're, yeah, they're, because they're, they enjoy the devil spirit that tells them they're okay. Taken by demonic possession. 
and the phrase I was wrong will never leave their lips. Never. And that's the sign of possession that you're mm-hmm. wholly owned perfect possession as Malachi Martin, the real exorcist would say perfectly possessed. That's well, where we're I, at. I, I want to say that there are people like you and Richard Grove, uh, you know, and, and I figure, you know, we're in the blue pyramid holodeck, no matter what happens here in this matrix, there's still creator and our walk with creator and with truth and nothing in the blue pyramid holodeck can separate us from the love of creator. And I, agree. I don't I don't care. You know, I I you know, I'm not gonna win that many people, but I know I've won a few to the side of natural law and truth. And so my life has been a success. We've I won mean, our souls. We've won our individuated souls. Right. So so I'm I'm saying that, you know, when you get awakened to natural law and you wake up from this trance of Stockholm Syndrome, uh, all you want to do is study and learn more and more and do more. And, and like, you're not bored. You don't need rock and roll, sex, and drugs. You need more knowledge. You mean you don't want to sit on the couch eating Twinkies loaded with food-grade gypsum? Well, that's not the goal of life is is something really special. Mark. I mean, that's some nutritious stuff that they load into those Twinkies. Does the body good? I I, I, I personally prefer the silicone in the cheese. (laughs) That's my (laughs) good old food grade gypsum. I'll tell you. Yeah. Thank God for those additives. When I found out about that, I, I, I immediately thought of times that I ate Twinkies, and I Jay, was like... Jay, you're, ju- was, you're just an ingrate. You don't like wallboard in your snacks. I mean, come on, man. You're just not, not just so ungrateful. It just, Next, you're going to say you don't want complete uh, genetic modification uh, agents injected into your body with, uh, against, against your consent. I mean... Well, you know, they're putting it in the food now, so I'm going to get covered that way. Right. Right. Thank God. So so I, I just want to say that, you know, karma is coming with, with America has murdered 11 million people in the last 30 years. Uh, and, you know, the entire American economy is based on derivatives and corruption, and it's all going to fall like a house of cards right now. I mean, Gerald Salente said 30 banks are ready to go belly up. And in June, the corporate debt in America starts to get rolled over from 3% interest to 8%. So you're going to see the whole thing go right down the old toilet. Oh, and when it does, we're going to have a lot of dodos on our hands. People that I call dead on day one, you know, as an acronym, dodos. That they're they're not going to know what to do. It's going to hit them by complete surprise. They're going to be completely unprepared, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, they're going to be dead on the first day. Well, you know, well, that's that's really their plan when they orchestrate the collapse. Is that's what they want? They want chaos. We have forty three million illegal aliens in America now, and. Uh, you know, a lot of the uh, Mexicans that came up in the uh, 90s and 2000s, uh, I worked with many of them in construction, and I saw them working for my friend's restaurants that he built, and they were salt-of-the-earth people. They were conservative, hardworking. They'd have a day off Sunday, and they'd go and get more work, and and they sent their money back to their families in Mexico, and they they changed the lives of their families by sacrificing themselves for the greater good of their family. And the, a lot of people come to America and do that, Mark. And what we're getting now with this Joe Biden invasion, 
And um, there's a 72% reduction in crime in Venezuela. Well, that's because they're shipping all their criminals to America. They're emptying their prisons and shipping them to America. They want to create as destabilized and debauched of a population as humanly possible. They want people who do not understand morality. They want people who have a distorted religious view of morality. They want mm-hmm. people who bring their distorted political views here. They want people who do not understand rights, human rights and true freedom and who want no part of an understanding of true morals. Because mm-hmm. that's what will degrade a country and destroy its fr- freedom faster than anything else. And the founding fathers of America tried to warn people over and over and over again. And they told people things like the more and more people fall away from real morality, that you'll have an, the nation collapse faster from internal collapse by the population becoming immoral than it could possibly collapse the speed that it could possibly collapse at from external invasion and the founding fathers were absolutely correct regarding that dynamic because to the extent that they learned natural law they did attempt to communicate that down to the population and the population would not really listen we want to believe that our all of our distorted religious mindsets are correct. We don't want to learn the truth of real spirituality and real morality. And that's why don't expect anything better than what we have right now, ladies and gentlemen. Expect it to get infinitely worse and expect the human condition to degrade at an infinitely worse rate moving forward into the future. I predict this over and over and over and over again and told people what to expect and what not to expect based on the dynamic that consciousness that and the direction that consciousness was headed because I have gauged it very specifically through social experiments and really careful observation. And I'm telling you today we are in a position far worse than when I even began this work to try to educate the masses of humanity to how real freedom works that we're in a true. way worse situation I, I spent you know my time telling people and you know this was good. Well, thank, thank you Jay I enjoyed it. Revolution Radio. Radio every Wednesday 8 p.m. Eastern Time on Studio B for Momentary Zen with host Zen Garcia at freedomslips.com, the people station. We, we, we did not engage in conflict that was out of line with our mission. Is it disloyal? Is it sedition? Is it treason to oppose the hands of tyranny? Never! I will never send troops anywhere on a mission of that kind without telling them that if somebody shoots at them, they can darn well shoot back. I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty! Oh, give me! A dark cloud is finally lifting across the world as U.S. military intelligence and their global partners are destroying the deep state criminal power structure that has ruled over our planet for hundreds of years. We are free with the God-given rights, and we shall not yield that right to any power on Earth. Hi, I'm Scott McKay. The world is at, and I am your host on The Tipping Point. 
on Revolution Radio, where every Monday from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern, we bring you the 